Just a couple of nice guys talking about mean girls. Welcome back to Hive Mind Unlimited. And welcome to the seventh episode of How Did It Age? Where we rewatch old movies with new context and see how they've aged. That's what we're doing. And today's movie is Mean Girls. <clears throat> it's from 2004. It's a comedy written by Tina Fey. Yes. And I'll let you do the rest of the facts. It is directed by Mark Waters, who has done of some other movies, and produced by the illustrious Lorne Michaels from Saturday Night Live. NBC's very own Lorne Michaels. Yes, and it stars the likes of Lindsay Lohan, Rachel McAdams, Tim Meadows, Anna Gasteyer, Daniel Dranzais, <laughs> Amy Poehler, and some other people. It's a pretty star-studded cast. Absolutely. You know, it is what it is. It's such a cult classic. It's based off the book Queen Bee and the Wannabes, which mm. was like a self-help book Tina Fey read, and it's about, like, raising daughters. Okay. And the clicks and, you know, popularity and things they might encounter along the way. So it's kind of based off of that book. Did you ever read the click books? Click books? The click. Uh-uh. I mean, it was just called click, but it was a... Uh really popular series of books for girls in like, when we were in like sixth grade, I feel like everybody was reading them. Interesting. And when we were in like fourth grade, it was very popular with all the girls at my school. And so I read the first one, and that's how I learned what a period was. Like in the book? Yeah, like uh, grammatically. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I was going, I was going commas only. <laughs> Why and are there I... dots <laughs> all over these pages? Yep, yep, and I asked my mom that, and then now I know. Oh, so if you think I don't know how to stop talking, <laughs> imagine being before fourth grade. Um, very successful movie, as we all know, and was so off the rip. This movie had a eighteen point one million dollar budget and made almost one hundred and eighty one million dollars. Mm. So a shit ton, as you say in the business, ten times. Yeah, it was number one its first weekend in the box office and spawned the very recent remake, which is a musical. Yeah, and I guess before they brought the musical to the camera, it was on Broadway for about 10 years. Premiered in 2018. 2018, that's about 10 years. Right, okay, yeah, <laughs> It's sure. over five, so. It's six. Yeah, it's almost 10. Yeah, you could have said six years. I could have. It would have worked, but um, it has a 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. It a, does. A score of 66 on Metacritic and a 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Yep, and our favorite movie critic, Legend Roger Ebert loved it as well, gave it three out of four stars, saying, In a wasteland of dumb movies about teenagers, Mean Girls is a smart and funny one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, it's smart. I, oh, totally. I'm not even, I'm not, it's just funny that he's like, trash the whole genre. Yeah. Here's a good movie. Yeah, usually he has something kind of quirked up to say, and this one was just kind of... Yeah. In a field of shit, this movie rocks. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, okay, Raj. Another funny thing I want to mention about this is that uh, before I was doing YouTube, I was posting a lot of my illustrations on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And this is back in the day when you would actually use hashtags to try to get people to find your stuff on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And I would sometimes throw in a few funny ones. So I drew a uh, cartoon dog chasing a tennis ball. And I put, you know, hashtag dog. Hashtag tennis ball. All the normal. Hashtag cat. Sometimes you get some cat fans. We'll see, see a dog drawing. They like it. All right. Then I put hashtag that's so fetch. And Jonathan Bennett, who played Aaron Samuels in this movie, liked it and commented on it, which is sad because that means that he was searching hashtag that's so fetch on Instagram yeah. over 15 years probably after the movie came out. He really so. rode his own coattails out of this one. He made, I think, two cookbooks. Well, isn't he like the host of Cake Boss or something? Yeah. I, I mean, think it, he's the host of one of those cake shows. Yeah, he made a cookbook called The Burn Book or something like, oh, like that. like the Don't Burn It book. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, He. this is his claim to fame. Absolutely. And rightfully so, because he sucks in it. Ah. He's as stiff as an old rock. Okay, yeah, he's not one of my top seven favorite performers in the movie. No. Aaron Paul and James Franco also went out for the role. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I, it was I, I could imagine it being James Franco. For sure, because at this point, all he had done was... Uh, Freaks and Geeks? Freaks and Geeks and the Spider-Man movies. 
Oh, okay. Now, had you seen this movie before? You know, this is one of the first ones kind of from this era where I don't think I saw it right when it came out. Mm -hmm. I don't think I saw this movie until like 2010. 2004, I was 10 years old. Uh -huh. And for those next couple years, in my mind, this was like a girl movie. I was going to say, I wrote down that I was pretty apprehensive to see this movie yeah. and thought of it as a chick flick. Yep. Because it was marketed as such. And then like, I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, wait. Am I allowed to think this is really funny? Yeah. Like, am kind of I, like, I kind of, like, I didn't want to be seen as, like, I don't know, like, girly. Right. I was very afraid of that as a child because yeah. I was, I was called that a lot. And yeah. so I was like, I'm not going to get into the, like, I'm not watching that movie. That's nope. for girls. And then yeah. I watched it and was like, wow, this is funny. Yeah, it's that's just like kind of the time we grew up, you know. In yeah. those preteen, early teen years, I was like, oh hell no, I gotta like, you know, Anchorman, Hot Rod, more in that space where it was just like obviously goofy, got Gladiator, Gladiator. <laughs> oh god, nothing funny about that movie. Uh huh. But yeah, I was very apprehensive to enjoy this movie, and then when I got around to it, I was like, oh fuck, that shit's good. Steak. Iron Maiden, yep. ACDC, Guns, Guns and Football. I yep. say those go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, big dogs, not small dogs. Nope. Horses, horses. Uh huh. Fast cars and big cars mm -hmm. with huge wheels. Lesbians and not gay guys. Yeah, that stuff that you had to like as a as a kid growing up. You yeah. know, it's hard mm -hmm. times. Yeah, I watched a lot of Ellen. Yeah, it was tough. And there are a lot of really, really iconic lines in this movie. A Absolutely. lot of it entered the vernacular. And sometimes you forget how many of these lines are. Like, like you hear people say these things and you forget that it's from this movie. Yeah, it's super badass in that way. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This movie, like, lives on zingers. It's all punctuated by these very bratty lines that are delivered just, like, straight to you. Yeah, that's part of what makes the writing of this movie so impressive. Yeah. Is that it was around the time where you had a lot of, like, a filler and a lot of people saying a lot of the same things, mm -hmm. I feel like. And this was written in a way that it kind of, like, predicted the impact it would have because that's yes. how it works. Like, yeah. get in, loser, we're going shopping. How many times have you heard people say that? Mm -hmm. That's all from this movie. Yep. You know, even the you go Glen Coco. Yeah. Like my mom says that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that's a weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it just there's tons of lines in this movie that have stuck around. Yeah. And people who haven't even seen this movie have probably heard tons of these. Yeah. One of the lines that I feel like doesn't get quoted a ton that's very early on when Katie is describing Katie being Lindsay Lohan's character, she's describing like the the perception of what it's like to be homeschooled and it shows those like kids on the farm and they're like on the third day god created the remington bolt action rifle to fight the dinosaurs and the homosexuals <laughs> <laughs> that's like i had no memory of that whole little sequence and when that came up i was like and the pause he says to fight the dinosaurs and the homosexuals. It's like, yeah. holy shit. One of my favorite lines is delivered by Tim Meadows when he's trying to get to the bottom of this burn book, like the calamity that comes after the burn book gets kind of like leaked and thrown all yeah. over the school, and he gathers them all in the gym, and he's like, I will keep you here all night. And then the other teacher whispers to him, we can't legally keep them past four. <laughs> and he says, I will keep you here till four. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Meadows is awesome in this. Like, a lot of the characters have, like, kind of a deadpan thing going on. Like, there are obviously some really expressive characters in here. You know, Regina and Gretchen and even, like, Tina Fey is very, like, expressive. But, like, Tim Meadows and Lindsay Lohan specifically are kind of just, like, straight down the middle yeah i mean i think there's power in the dry humor in this yeah. movie i think um, amanda S S i forget how to say her name all the time amanda seyfried 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 yeah. karen however you say her at the yes. actress's name is so good in this movie because she's so dry so airheaded yeah you know and tina fey has a similar like not airheaded but very dry delivery mm -hmm. you can tell she's like done with all this at the school like the drama yeah. is below her because yeah. she's a teacher with a real life and has actual problems yeah but she's still committed to like enriching the lives of her students and yeah. all those things but she gives very dry delivery throughout it and uh yeah i, I think Tim Meadows and Tina Fey are 
definitely leagues above yes. everyone else in terms of acting and performing in this movie. Yeah, I mean, shout out Rachel McAdams. I think she does a great job. Yeah, she does as well. Two of my favorite lines come from one of the most problematic characters in this movie, the health teacher. The first scene in health class, he says, don't have sex, you will get pregnant and die. <laughs> Coach Carr. <laughs> Coach Carr. Mm -hmm. And then later on in class, he says, I know, you're becoming a teenager, you're gonna have urges, you're gonna wanna take your clothes off. Don't take your clothes off because you will get chlamydia and die. <laughs> yeah. It's a great reprise of those lines. Yep. His, yeah, his character is fucked up, but those two lines are very funny. I also love when uh, Damien is in the girl's bathroom with all the girls and a girl comes out and is like, what are you doing in here? Just a really short girl. In a vest. <laughs> in a vest. And he just goes... Danny DeVito, I love your work. Yeah. <laughs> Chases her out of the bathroom. I have that in one of my favorite scenes ever, too. Yeah. Damien has the absolutely classic line, that's why our hair's so big, it's full of secrets. Yeah. That is, like, one of the most iconic lines from this movie, and uh -huh. rightfully so. It's really funny. Yeah. That's just like, that's why our hair's so big, it's full of secrets. <laughs> yeah. His character's awesome. Yeah, he and Janice Ian, like, they're, because Liz Lizzie Kaplan's one of my favorites, yeah. especially comedic actors in the 2000s. She's so funny. Mm -hmm. I love her in Party Down. Yep. And... She and Damien really have a dynamic going in this movie where, like, I wish there was more of them. Yeah. It almost, like, yes, that's, like, the part of the movie where you're you're supposed to be kind of sad is when Lindsay Lohan's character is becoming a lot more like the plastics and you see less of Lizzie in that. But I'm sad as a movie watcher yeah. that during that time you don't get any funny back and forth between Damien yep. and uh, Janice because it's just so funny how they deliver their lines as best friends. It's very believable best friendship, too. It's, yeah. like, the gay guy and the goth girl, yep. you know, and they they just, just feels very authentic, them being friends. They wanted to cast uh, Janice Ian as someone who was Kelly Osbourne-like, but they thought Lizzie Kaplan was too attractive to play her, but her acting, like, prevailed. They were like, no one else can do it. We have to make this work. I think also, as, like, a young person, when I watched this movie... I, they cover that in a way. Yeah. Like, I don't think, like, whoa, she's really good looking in this movie. Right. That's not like, I think Lizzie Kaplan is is gorgeous, but I'm like, that, you don't feel that in yeah. the movie. They play that down. I know? also think there's the classic, like, high school trope, too, of, like, plenty of people who are really attractive were still fucking weirdos because they didn't fit into, like, the archetype. Totally. That was, like, whatever popularity at that time was, and I think that kind of, like, emphasizes that point is, like, yeah, of course, all these people are, like, good-looking in their own way, but if you didn't fit the exact mold of, like, the plastics in this instance, you weren't cool or you weren't attractive. Yeah, and I think that is something that has changed a lot. Like, when we were younger, that really was the deal. Yeah. Like, people used to, like, realize that people were attractive yeah. once they left high school mm -hmm. because, like, during that time, there was such a, like, hierarchy of social cliques and yeah. all these things that made it, like, these people are attractive because they're popular or whatever, and you wouldn't notice those things, yeah. you know? It's, like, a very weird, rigid high school and middle school experience that of the early 2000s that it really did feel like that. Yeah. It didn't matter what you looked like. It mattered how popular you were. Yeah. Got a bunch more lines I want to shout out here. I love when Karen asks Katie, how is she from Africa and she's white? And Gretchen chimes in and says, oh my god Karen, you can't just ask people why they are white. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a great line. I love when they show up to Regina's house and Gretchen's like, keep an eye out for her mom's boob job. It's awesome. Their heart is rocks. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a flex. <laughs> yeah. Amy Poehler is, oh. is Regina's mom, by yes. the way, and she's so funny in so it. So awesome. I also love the line from the guy in the mathletes when uh, earlier in the movie, he like he like breaks the news to Katie <laughs> that he's only into women of color. Yes. Which I think is really, really funny yeah. the way that he delivers that. He almost is like assuming that Katie Heron has a crush on mm -hmm. him. But I'm not interested. I only I'm only interested in women of color, <laughs> which uh, Katie Heron obviously is not into him. Yeah. But later when he goes and talks to Janice Ian yep. at the dance, he says <laughs> he says, Are you Puerto Rican? And she's like Lebanese. And he's like. I feel that. <laughs> it's just like, all right, I'm good. Yeah, he's like, I'm good. You know, a woman of color. At the talent show, when Kevin G does his rap, which was written by Amy Poehler, and like he had to be coached on how to perform that, and I love picturing the behind the scenes of Amy Poehler being like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like this overtly sexual rap. I love like they cut the music on that. They're like, all right, that's enough, Kevin. And he goes, 
Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. He's still, like, very polite. Yeah, and when he's, like, where does it show up where he says, like, sick-ass MC? Yeah, it's on his card. On his card, yeah, yeah, yeah. he has a card. He has a card to get people to join the mathletes. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. My favorite line in here is uh, there's, there's two Karen lines that I want to yes. shout out. <laughs> Uh, the second one being my favorite, but the first one I absolutely love is just, she has just this way of having like a glazed over look <laughs> yeah. and she's like, you want to do something fun? Want to go to Taco Bell? <laughs> yes. Like that's the idea of something <laughs> fun to her, which is just awesome. Cause yeah. she's almost like, she's almost like a non character. They like write her off on yeah. everything. She's just like really dumb yep. and that's her whole thing. But my favorite line in the entire movie is when Karen is explaining that she, like, her skills, because Katie's like, you've got to have skills, yeah. you know, like, you've got to be good at something. And she explains that she can, like, tell the weather from her boobs, which is such a funny idea to write <laughs> into this movie. Yeah. But my favorite thing in it is when she's like, it's like I have ESPN or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's an absolute classic. <laughs> which is just like, you could like, have ESPN. <laughs> it's just like, who comes up? It's so good. I also love when Karen's at Katie's party and she wants to make out with this boy. And I think it's Gretchen is like, you can't make out with him. He's your cousin. And she's like, yeah, but he's my first cousin. And then she's like, you have your cousins and your first, first cousins. cousins. And then you're like, yes. she's like, no. <laughs> and then she's like, S Seth, wait. <laughs> she like chases, she like chases after him. She really wants to make out with her cousin. That is an awesome line. Yeah. But I think I have two for my favorite lines. I love when Gretchen is in the office with Tim Meadows getting yelled at about the burn book. And she's like, I don't think my father, the inventor of toaster strudel, would be pleased to hear this. Yeah, yeah. That like sub storyline of Gretchen Wieners being rich because her dad invented toaster strudel yeah is just awesome and then i love during all the chaos when tim meadows goes to help the girl who's like hanging from a door frame and she kicks at him and he ducks it and he goes oh hell no i did not leave the south side for this and then pulls <laughs> the fire alarm to break it all that is like it's like the f only time you see tim meadows like erupt he's been so tame the whole movie and then he just screams that while he's in like a white beater. It's awesome. The, the whole, like, that whole idea that he loses his cool yeah. over this and is like, all junior girls report to the gymnasium immediately. Yeah. It's immediately. <laughs> it is perfect. It's awesome. Um, yeah, tons of quotables, though. I love when uh, Katie turns in her test at the end and Tina Fey just perks up and goes, oh, hi, did you want to buy any drugs? Yeah. <laughs> they put her in the burn book as a drug dealer. Uh, there's a boo, you whore. Oh, yeah, boo, you whore. Yeah, tons of great lines. Stop trying to make fetch happen is hilarious, but let's get into scenes. Okay. I will say first, I don't think there's a lot of scenes per se that aged really poorly in this. I think there's a lot of dialogue choices throughout that were like obviously really dated. I mean, Regina says the R word like an unbelievable amount of times. Like I didn't remember how many times that was. Oh, I didn't remember it either. But I did think after we watched it. I was like, people really did say that yeah. in the early 2000s that much. Yeah, no, I mean, it's written, like, true to form, for yeah. sure. I think that's part mm -hmm. of why it's, like, the cult classic that it is. Not even cult classic, just, like, major classic comedy-wise. And then the tone of just, like, how they bully Janice Ian in this is, like, probably also true of the time. But I wasn't a girl in 2004, but, like... Uh -huh. The I guess just the homophobia from like the female angle is something we're not used to seeing that much, even in this era of comedy. Yeah, I was kind of surprised by like Regina saying, like, I can't have a lesbian at my pool party. Yeah, like, like those that, lines yeah. are like for some reason, you know, if that's fucking Seth Rogan saying that as a high schooler, it's like, oh, of course dudes talk like that, but just seeing like girls talk like it, just retrospectively from my perspective as a guy, I was like, oh shit. It existed both ways, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's probably it, naive, but... Especially now, like, like people are just not like yeah. that the same way. Yeah. Especially women, I will say, like, it's not... I don't know. I feel like sexuality, the way that people view it, has changed a yeah. lot since 2004, yeah. where that felt shocking to hear. For sure. Even more than hearing, like, the F slur and some of the other movies that we've, yeah. you know, seen. Like, I, I meet way more homophobes who are guys than girls. 
Yo, so, totally. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, every day. Yeah. I met a guy in the grocery store earlier, and I was like, eh, you probably don't like gay people, do you? And yeah. he was like, hell no. Right. And I was like, see ya. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing that survey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about gay people? Jim Parsons. Like it, love it, hate them. <laughs> <laughs> like you mentioned, I love the scene when Damien chases the girl out of the girl's bathroom and says he's one of Danny DeVito's biggest fans. This is also the scene where they, like, conceive the idea of Katie going undercover into the plastics mm. there's like a couple scenes that happen in the bathroom that are really really good i love later on when you pointed out the transition into it when gretchen like fades into the bathroom from the classroom oh yeah there's like a really really cinematic <laughs> shot like a trick yeah that happens that has no, there's no reason for it no like gretchen's outside and like the lighting kind of like starts to change on her face and then it like cuts to what looks like a side profile of that exact shot, but she's in the bathroom now. And I was kind of like, the person who did this was probably like, wow, that was awesome yeah. that I was able to achieve this, <laughs> but why is it in Mean Girls? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it does nothing for the movie, but I was like, wow, what a shot. Yeah. I love the use of the bathroom as a setting in general because that just felt like where shit went down mm -hmm. in high school. That's where you schemed. That's where you planned things. That's where you talk shit about people where you heard people talking shit about you while you were taking a shit, you know? Right. It was just like that. That's great. That's like so tonally correct, you know? Uh -huh. When Katie first goes to Regina's house is like one of my favorite scenes because you get Amy Poehler who like makes some mocktails. Yeah. <laughs> like, and Amy Poehler's ridiculous. She's like seemingly is in Kurt. She asks Lindsay Lohan, do you want liquor in your drink? Because I'd rather you guys do it here, which is just the classic trope of like the bad parent, like kind of under the guise of like, well, yeah, the party house mom. Yeah. Like there were houses like this that you knew of in high school yep. that like, oh, their parents don't care. You can do whatever <laughs> over there. And there's like the little scene inside of that bigger scene where the dog is attacking Amy Poehler's boob. Yeah. And when I was reading, like, little behind-the-scenes stuff for this, that was, like, Amy Poehler's idea, and she had put, like, dog treats and a piece of a hot dog inside of her bra, so the dog is, like, gnawing at her, which is just, it has really no reason to be in there. Like, it's, she just picks up the dog, and it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, trying to, like, nibble on her nipple. It's, it's so, so funny. funny. But then that's, like, when they bust out the burn book for the first time. Yeah. And Regina does say... Uh, the D word there for lesbians. Yep. And it is like so harsh and cutting and you're just like not used to hearing that word yeah. these days. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. They say a bunch of terrible stuff, but they're supposed to be terrible girls talking shit about everybody else in school. So yeah, that like, book was mean, dude. It is mean as fuck. I was literally like thinking that. I was like, oh. I don't remember the book being mean. Oh. Like they were saying a lot of mean things about their classmates. Yeah. And I, that's just like, you don't want to be doing that. Actually, it's a quick background that I think is funny yeah. about the way that I enjoy this movie is uh, I did musical in high school mm -hmm. and uh, I went to an all boys school, but there were all girls schools in the area. Mm -hmm. And so you could sign up to do their musicals as well. And sure. so I was in the musical at the school my sister went to and I would drive there after school every single day and not, I mean, every single day while the <laughs> musical was happening, not just like in general, all of high school. not <laughs> just in general, but I was in a musical there. I was a freshman. And I remember I showed up one day for musical practice and I walked in and like there were groups of girls everywhere around the school just crying and like yelling. And I was like, oh, mm. shit. I was like, what happened? It's like 9-11 all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Come to find out that some girls who were in the musical had started a little internet forum oh. where they referred to everybody by their initials but wrote a bunch of like rumors and mean things and were going back and forth doing it and people had printed them out and like passed them around the school like legitimately just like the burn book Shh. it was crazy like people were crying there was a lot of stuff in there that was like way too far yeah. like told secrets about people that shouldn't have been out there whole thing the stuff about me, admittedly, was pretty mild. Yeah. It didn't really bother me that much. But I remember that uh, I was referencing that movie, and literally we all got called into the musical practice space by the director, and I turned around to a group of people and said, all junior girls to the gymnasium <laughs> immediately, immediately. And 
some people thought it was funny, and the people who had really nasty things in there about them did not think it was funny. No. But it really felt like that day. Yeah, That's what it felt like. Sorry you had to go through that, man. I didn't have to go through much, but I'm sorry for the people who had all those nasty things about them in there. Yeah. And those girls got kicked out of the musical, I think. Holy Maybe. shit. Maybe. I don't remember. I think they really needed people, so they might have kept them on. <laughs> Stuff like that happened in high school. Real life replicates fiction. Life imitates art. Fuck, you are so good with words. That, that is, is actually, nice. it's a famous that saying. Is I did nice. not come up with that. But. Wow, that was really, 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 really good. Yeah. I have like three scenes that are competing for my best. I'll get to those. I'll say my two worst scenes. Sure. For terms of just tastefulness, I don't like when Coach Carr gets caught making out with a student. I don't like it, and that's just me. That is just you, because I mean, I, I feel like you need... You need that scene, is what you're going to say. Go ahead, buddy. You need Coach Car Like, Coach Carr needs to be a full-on creep so that later Tina Fey gets investigated for selling drugs. I guess. I think it could have been done more in a subtle way than, like, actually showing him making out with, like, a supposed high schooler. That's just me. Totally. Also, in a non-problematic way, I hate when, like, Regina starts to turn on Katie and they're doing that scene as they're walking through the hallway, and Katie just trips head first and falls into a trash can, and her legs are sticking up. Yeah. Don't, like, that just that slapstick kind of humor, I feel like, doesn't have that much of place in this. I know she gets hit by a bus I was going to say, like, this movie has that. It jumps the shark a few times. Yeah, a few times. It's just, for whatever reason, that scene at that moment in time in the movie, I was like, oh, they just, you know, threw us a cheap joke there, really, for no reason. That was for the trailer. I mean, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, true. they kind of needed a scene like that. It's very iconic. Yeah. So it works, but I see what you mean. Yeah. For worst for me, I mean, I, I feel like... This movie has to play on stereotypes, and mm -hmm. I completely understand that. It's a high school. It needs its clicks. Yep. It has to establish everything. I just think they would have done that more tastefully now than they did in 2004. Yeah. Like, there's the Asian table and the way that they stare play on the stereotypes of Asian people, and they're not prominent characters at all in the movie, yeah. does feel rather, like, tasteless to me. Yeah, I feel like they're never the butt of a joke, though, really. Not 100%, but the way that they play them off and it's just supposed to be like a stereotype that's happening yeah. over there. I think it's weird that they're all like fawning and fighting over Coach Carr. That's like the weirdest element of that click. Yeah, and that they don't speak English throughout the entire movie. And then yeah. like, you know, spoiler alert, I guess, at the end, Gretchen joins their click and starts speaking their language. Yeah. It just feels very odd, mm -hmm. like the whole idea of the way that they're treated in yeah. this movie is, is it's just very weird. My pick for worst scene though is just Katie's apology at the end being like a really unearned redemption arc <laughs> in my mind. I did not remember. It feels like it skips like 50 steps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, like Regina gets hit by a bus. Yep. And then Katie, a few days later, takes the fall for the burn book or yep. whatever, and then does the mathletes thing. And then all of a sudden, she wins Spring Fling Queen, gets up there, breaks the crown, and calls a few people pretty, and yep. everybody loves her again. Yep. It's very, like, you never see a scene where anybody, like, makes up yeah. until, like, the very end dance thing. Yeah. Where she, like, walks up to Janice and is like, we good? Like, are we still fighting? Yeah. I'm like, dude, a girl got hit by a bus, <laughs> and, like, a bunch of other stuff has happened, and it just feels like there's no resolution at all. Yeah. And I feel like that is also kind of, like, it's connected to what I feel like is a bad message in this movie, <laughs> is, like, Tina Fey at one point has the line where she's like, Stop calling each other sluts because that it gives men the excuse to do it too. Yeah, I feel like that's a very dated idea to right. way uh, like to look at. It's a very like victim blaming sort of I ideology, and that's not blaming Tina Fey, who's like the actor in that right. scenario, or like the movie itself because it was very two thousand four. She's also the writer of the movie, though. So yeah, uh, uh, true. But still, <laughs> I'm just saying like the message of this movie yeah. feels very like odd. Yeah, no, I agree. It feels like, obviously, I can't relate to the struggle for, like, women's rights in 2004, because I was a 10-year-old boy. But yeah. when I look at this, even reading the BTS of this stuff, it's like, Tina Fey wanted to play a math teacher to help destroy the stereotype that women are bad at math. I'm like... 
duh, <laughs> duh, they could do math, but it's just like 20 years later. Right. And so I think there were just like way different battles, especially with Tina Fey being in comedy, having this career at SNL, and then getting to the point in 2004 to make this movie. I think she like chose to really like, you know, stab her flag into the ground at some junctures where like now it just doesn't feel like there's even really a battle there to fight. Yeah, which I guess is a testament to this movie and to Tina Fey yeah. that it did break some stereotypes. Totally. They just felt silly in the moment. Yeah. Like, the the thing that I wrote down was kind of like, my complaint there is that the message feels a little misguided or whatever, but at the end of the day, none of, like, the misogynists in this movie or the mean girls in this movie come out looking like the good character. Right, totally. You know, like, maybe Katie Heron, but again, that redemption arc feels very shallow. Yeah. The characters that you leave like the movie liking are like either kind of the innocent or oblivious characters or yep. the ones who are outside of the, the dynamic. So yeah. like it's like Janice Ian, like she's very individual and yes, vindictive and yeah. kind of crazy. But at the same time, you leave liking her because she's very individual. Mm -hmm. You leave liking Damien because he's really funny. Yeah. You leave liking Tim Meadows and Tina Fey. Yeah. You don't really leave the movie being like, you know what? Regina George is all right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or like anybody. But people can still change, you know? And that does show that. She channels her anger in a healthier way through field hockey or lacrosse. Yeah, one of the sports. Yeah. For sure. Yep. And I just, oh, that makes <laughs> me at the end, that last scene, they're like, Karen is like literally braiding a girl in a wheelchair's hair. Janice is like dating Kevin G. It is like the the pamphlet for a liberal arts college. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. look, everyone gets along here. Yeah. No problem. The classes are outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is like at that moment I was like, all right, we really we went a little overboard here. But yeah, Regina George walks by wearing like a sweatshirt. She's like, like she's not dressed <laughs> nice and she's just like, hey. And yeah. Katie's like, hey, like everybody's civil. Yeah. I just like whatever. One other really quick thing I just want to talk about aging poorly is the whole idea that Katie Heron is from Africa and only sees things through the lens of the animal world. Yes, that like, scene at the lunch, the fight scene that breaks out, I had that as one of my worst scenes. I am made to believe that Katie Heron was like raised by lions. <laughs> And is so shell shocked, like in culture shock, when she shows up to an American yeah. high school. Two weeks in, she's calling people sluts. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like, dude, it's like that is the thing. The overarching thing that I'll get to is, I wish I didn't have to say this, but Lindsay Lohan is not very good in this movie. Yeah. Like her, she is not a great actress in this no. movie, and the movie is held up by better performances and mm -hmm. good writing. Yeah, and so I still do like the movie, but I don't believe the Katie Heron character no. even a little bit no and her performance is always praised but i think you made a good point when we were watching it yesterday is like that character is perfectly designed for like supporting her as like an inexperienced actor at the time yeah because it's, it's like it's an insecure it's an insecure clueless character yeah and so when she does seem like oh I'll do that, or that dress is cool. Like when it seems or, like thanks, yeah, like those empty kind of <laughs> lines. It's like, oh, you know, it kind of works because you're, you were just you're from Africa and you just got plopped into an Illinois high school. Yeah, yeah. My scenes that I love the most, I think one that is probably a little underappreciated. I love the entire scene when she goes to her first Halloween party. Yeah, and she shows up as the zombie bride. And is like scaring everyone. During that, Regina kisses Aaron, and that's like a whole thing. And she runs out and she goes to Janice and Damien. And while they're watching a horror movie, she like opens the door and it's like the classic, ah, you get scared during a horror movie, and your friend yeah. walks in dressed as a zombie. Brilliant, awesome scene there. I think that like really gets some momentum going because then they really double down on being like vindictive. I love the all hell breaking loose scene is just awesome. The energy that's in that and like the size of like all the extras and people freaking out. It's like people are calling and crying home and like just the outright chaos during that. And you get, you get the vignettes of each conversation yes. as you're kind of like like weaving through yeah. it. Yeah, it's great. Tina Fey gets like hit and knocked over and breaks her glasses. Then you have Tim Meadows like taking his shirt off. Awesome. 
that one kind of goes without saying. That's like the climax of the movie. I think my favorite scene is like when Katie calls Karen and it ends up turning into the four-way call. Yeah. Like it does. We have the two-way call or the three-way call rather earlier in the movie where Gretchen's like overhearing Katie. And then later on, we have this four-way where everyone's like trying to be manipulative and getting shit on each other. And Karen inside of that scene like forgets to switch over, of course, and like calls Gretchen a bitch like right to her face. And she's like, what? She she says, oh my God, she's so (laughs) annoying. And then Gretchen goes, who is? And then she goes, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, hold on one second. Changes back. Yeah. Like that, I love the pacing of the writing and just comedy in that four way. And it is like corny having the four screens, but it's like just perfect. Like it's 2004. Oh, like it I, works. Yeah. It works perfect. And that scene is just really, really good to me. And one I did not remember. And going back being like, oh, fuck, that's like brilliant because it's a callback from earlier. Like we had already established that this kind of over here eavesdropping shit talking is going on and then <laughs> to have karen fuck it up is just it's perfect <laughs> yeah one other thing i want to mention that is so funny to me for some reason is that tim meadows is in a cast yeah and says that his carpal tunnel came back <laughs> and just fully has a broken arm for the whole movie yeah tina Fey's like i got a divorce and he goes my carpal tunnel came back, and she goes, <laughs> I won. <laughs> yeah. I was actually researching, and Tim Meadows did have a broken hand, and him being a cast is not in the script at all. And they just couldn't recast him because Tina Fey loved Tim Meadows so much, and they just like needed him to be in the movie. So when they started production, he was like, I still have six weeks left in this thing. And they were like, fuck it, you have carpal tunnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You're okay, going to be yeah. in the cast the whole time. That's awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> couldn't recast him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we saw Tim Meadows at, at Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza 2012. 2012? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We took a picture with him. Yep, that mm-hmm. was awesome. We were sweaty little freaks. We thought, yeah. yeah. It's cool that in 2012 we recognized Tim Meadows and knew him by name. Oh, yeah. Like, that is, like, a cool, because I think about that and I'm like, oh. I was like a kid. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, Tim Meadows. <laughs> at the Lala- weird principal for Mean Girls. Yeah. At Lollapalooza, yeah. waiting to see Jack White. He was like being escorted across the front, too. He had like star power. Of, of course. He, he was on SNL. He I was just, like, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. He's a legend. Especially in Chicago. I feel like we're anywhere near Second City. Yeah. That guy's a legend. Yeah, <laughs> comedy legend. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that. Because it'd be a musical for some reason. <laughs> the one called Lynn Mel Man- Lynn Lynn Well Lynn Mel Lynn Well Manoranda. Lynn, his name. Lynn Mel Wanaramda. No, it's Lynn Well Mandaranda Randa. <laughs> Lynn Mel Wanda It's actually Mir Lynn Well Minranda. <laughs> Mir Lynn Mel Ramanda. Yeah. Yeah. Call him up. Somebody call him up. Someone call his ass up and you know. Why, why? 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 Why is the remake singing? I don't know. Is uh, Tina Fey just like sicko for musicals? And she was like, oh, we're going to fucking do this. And they're like, did she have- sell it to somebody to do this? Because I feel like that's probably I don't I don't know anything about the remake. I haven't seen it. She's a she's a credited writer on that, too. Yeah. So she was a big part of it. I mean, I think Broadway is a fucking huge cash grab for anything. So like. <laughs> good for them (laughs) like it got on broadway and of course people went and saw it but like at least the film adaptation of the musical was pretty resoundingly dragged yeah i didn't see it so i can't i just don't know yeah eden told me yesterday she was like oh are you gonna watch the remake too you guys should do that before you do it and i was like oh good point no yeah we really should have now it's it's a it's a musical but it's rap isn't it it's kind of rap but it's like white guy historical rap you know, it's oh, okay. it's more like ah, okay, yeah, you yeah. Wouldn't, you wouldn't dig it. I just know at least like the the lead in it. I think is a rap <laughs> rapper. Yeah, apparently the film adaptation makes like fifty TikTok references. Oh, okay, they counted. It's like a lot. Oh, it's like yeah. every five minutes. Apparently, one reviewer wrote. At least the lead was a rapper. I think she had a YouTube channel. It's like Renee Raps. I think. <laughs> And so I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen it, and I don't know if they, what it is. But yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna see it either. Uh huh. Because based on the reviews I read, it references TikTok every five minutes and sucks. Oh. And they said it just. Yeah, they said it sucks. So it has to be realistic, though. Do you think they wouldn't talk about TikTok in high school right now? Blow your he- blow your load, buddy. Just shut up. What? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You gave me blow it up. Blow it off. Uh, all right. 
Sorry. Uh, how would it be differently today? I don't know. It probably wouldn't say the D word and the R word, and they probably wouldn't have a gym teacher making out with someone. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be a musical. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I mean, it, it is. Yeah. It's, it came out this year. I don't yeah. know. Or last year or something. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. It's it's a it's a musical now. So that's yep. how that how it would be different. I did have written down if like if it had never existed and we had to like make it today, I wish it wasn't narrated. I usually don't like narration in movies in general, but this one seems like we could just get it done through dialogue between the characters. That to me speaks to the crutch of having Lindsay Lohan as the main sure. actress. And and by the way, this is not like just to shit on Lindsay Lohan. She was like 17 when this movie was made. 16, yeah. Yeah, 16 or 17. Like I'm not saying she was supposed to be an amazing actress. Right. I'm just saying that in this movie, upon rewatching it, it shows that she has she's limitations as yeah. an actress. And I think that the narration helps them get out of some of that. I think so. It just at times it's like I'm I hate being like spoon fed all the information like right. as the viewer being like, and that's why she was a bitch. It's like, yeah, I know. She's she's a bitch. I get it. <laughs> like you don't need I don't need the like inner head the monologue voice. I just don't I don't yeah. know. It got on my nerves a little bit, but I have no good ideas on how to change that. I think it would have been more conversations with Janice and Damien right. where she says all of these things there that she's go. thinking. Yeah. I think that's how you could have done it is like, you know, that little corner, like I think it was Janice's basement mm -hmm. or something where they're like hanging out and talking about stuff. They just have more of that. Yeah. And that way she can explain how she's feeling or thinking. You can even have her sitting there talking to them and it cuts two scenes the next day right. of them in high school, you know, whatever. That's fine, but I, I do think it needed some level of, like, keeping the story going. Yeah. So that inner monologue does help do that because Lindsay Lohan has limitations of, like, expressing mm -hmm. all of those things. How about this for how it's different today? They're in college. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. They're like sorority girls. <laughs> it's like Delta Tridel. I feel like the reason they don't make as many of those types of movies, like high school is like a contained environment where everybody's in the same building the whole time. Yeah. Or like two buildings, I guess. Yeah. But like college is like, that's like a city. It's like a little yeah. city. Like, I went to college in jail, so it was just one building. Oh. For yeah. me. It's just like in high school, I knew everyone. And in co I went to college with people that I've never met. You know what I mean? I guess. Like it's a I never thought about it like that. Like you went to college the same four years as another person and you'd never met them. Wow. Same college, same years. Fuck. That shouldn't really I hope they're doing all right. <laughs> Seriously. It's a lot of people, so Seriously, I hope they're doing all right. No yeah. one's in jail or dead. Right. Or divorced or has too many kids or their kids are fucked up and their kids are criminals. Or like their house burned down. Or their parents killed each other in like an act of love and hate, um, passion really in the throes of passion. Yeah, I hope they oh. both like didn't at each other at the same time. Yeah, that'd be fucked. I um, hope they all have like cool cars that are professional baseball players. Yeah, or they have like a sick ass pool that everybody wants to come over yeah. and use all the time, and it's a bit of a burden that everybody wants to come over and swim. But, but at the same time, price you pay for having price, a backyard yeah, waterfall sick and ass, slide. Sick ass pool with yeah. a waterfall, and, a and the rocks look real too. Yeah. They're not, but they look real. Yeah, or they like. I don't know. I hope everyone the, has a pet alligator. I hope everybody's the CEO of a company and Fuck. just got a promotion to, the to super CEO. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, me too, man. Uh -huh. I like it's good to put out that energy mm -hmm. of like wishing people you don't know well. I yeah. think so. I think that's important. I hope they're drift out in designer and they're yeah. stunting on their haters. Never and like, fly coach again. Yeah. I hope they have a conversation with somebody from high school who's like, who would have thought you'd be the rich one? You yeah. Know? Like stuff like that. Yep. I, I hope their Rock parents, hard. I hope their parents are immortal. Um, I oh. hope that they have superpowers for some reason and they're keeping it a secret because obviously yeah, you don't as soon as that. people know, mm, yeah. You already got the pool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Let's mm. do recast. Totally. <laughs> I mean, they already did it with a musical. Come on, man. <laughs> but male reboot. I'm talking male reboot. So many female reboots out there. Let's go Mean Boys. That's what I'm casting <laughs> for. Mean Boys. Uh, I don't know a lot of young actors, so forgive me. I'm putting Kai Sinat, Finn Wolfhard, and Lewis Partridge. 
in high school. Uh, Jenna Ortega is going to play Aaron Samuels. And maybe Finn Wolfhard's character moves from Canada and goes to high school in the U.S. And uh, he's very culture shocked, so he compares everything to hockey. I think it's fucked up that you even think of having like a... Like mean boys in high school currently are... That's not funny to joke about. Why not? Because they're killers. A lot of them. Yeah. Like it's such, it's too dangerous. You're playing with fire, dog. Lewis Partridge is British. Ha! <laughs> right. I mean, he's not going to be a killer, though. Oh, true. He'll probably be a creep or killers something. Killers are from New York, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Kai Sanat, I mean, he's famous as shit for streaming, right. so he can't afford to kill. I mean, and he's got a lot to lose. It's always white kids, too. And Finn Wolfhard is from Canada, so he's not going to kill. Doesn't even know how to use a gun. No. Good idea, actually, So yeah. that's what I mean. I feel like I kind of, like, you know. Yeah. I kind of, like, figured all that out. Yep. And nice. uh, that's as many young people as I know. That's cool. I, I mean, the other kids I know are from Stranger Things as well. Yeah. And I feel like the, and if you do Finn and Gaten or Finn and Kayla, like, they've all, they, people are going to see them together and be like, those are the Stranger <laughs> Things kids. Aliens. Yeah, right. So the, the, <laughs> not aliens. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Don't correct <laughs> me. It's going to make yourself look bad. They're not aliens. Yeah, well, you look bad corrected me. That's all like right. me being like, they're actually orcs. <laughs> they're not just gremlins. I wouldn't yeah. have called them, well... I did call. <laughs> People are mad about that, but I was trying yeah. to be stupid. I understand that Gollum's not a gremlin. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to correct and you. And I said he I... fell in the lava, and I know it was a volcano. What? It was in another movie. It was in another video. <laughs> okay. That I said something about the Lord of the Rings. Um, I was thinking of my recast kind of more at the time. You thought Ooh, of yours presently, totally. which is fun. That's why we do these videos. It's fun and exciting to hear each other's opinions on things. Right. Um, I wish Katie's dad was Brian Cranston and he had like 80% more of the lines than he did. Like, I wish he was a prominent role in the film. <laughs> he was good, though, the guy who did it. I, that guy drives me nuts. I, I liked him. should have looked up his name. I probably have it down somewhere, but I don't really give a fuck. Okay. Um, and I wish Aaron Samuels would say a Efron. <laughs> He would have been too hot. It Fuck like, yeah, it would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have distracted from the plot, though. Yeah. Everyone would have been like, that's Troy Bolton from High School Musical it was that like, wasn't out yet. I think it was that like, same year. Really? I think High School Musical came out like 2005. Maybe. I think it's 2006. Fuck yeah, that sounds right, actually. I don't know, but either way, speaking of same year, something that I do want to bring up is that Rachel McAdams filmed The Notebook this same year that Mean Girls was filmed. I didn't even know she was in The Notebook. She's the main character. Wow. <laughs> in the notebook? Yeah, wow. Okay, yeah. I think that's <laughs> hilarious that she plays a high schooler in yeah. this movie and then also was in the notebook the same year. She doesn't play a high schooler in the notebook? I don't think so. I saw the notebook in 2016 and I watched it after the end of an all nighter. So it was the morning. Oh, right. And it was fucked up. Yeah. I remember hating it, but I don't like the details or wishy washy. I remember he builds her a house. And he says, if you're a bird, I'm a bird. Wait, that's actually really romantic. No, if you're a bird, you're like a fucking shoebill stork or something. So and if you're a bird, bird, you're a fucking penguin because you can't even fly because you have no skills. Come on, man. I have skills. Yeah, eating fish and shitting. I do like to eat fish, <laughs> yeah. but I can also draw cartoons. Can you draw cartoons? Don't call me a shoebill stork just because I have mad kick game. What? <laughs> mad kick game. I'm a bald eagle. You're not a bald eagle. You're a chicken. If you're a bald eagle bald eagle because you're in danger, you put yourself in danger all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's why you're a bald eagle because there's like almost none of you left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's it's called why. life on the edge. And because you're almost bald because you're bald. I'm not bald, I'm and white. And <laughs> because you're like the eagles from last year, the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> Joke job. You won on the lot to start and then you lost seven of your last eight games and then you died. <laughs> Nice, man. I can see you have some pent-up animosity. This soundtrack is fine. I only like the theme song. The yeah, you look. It's like real 80s and 90s sounding. Yeah. yeah. And then the singing of Jingle Bell Rock is like pretty fun. I like that. <laughs> I just thought of the scene where Gretchen goes to fix the boombox <laughs> oh, yeah. and kicks it into Jason's head. <laughs> yeah. That shit is so <laughs> funny. Because she hits it like this hard, and then it's obvious that they switch camera angles and they like have someone throw it at him. It goes so fast. <laughs> it goes so fast. It is so funny. Yep. Yeah, that might be actually, I, oh, that's my best scene, is that one. Just that little moment. <laughs> Yeah, I love the singing of Jingle Bell Rock. I don't mind the theme song. I do like uh, 
God is a DJ, <laughs> the pink song at the end, kind yeah. of when they're all, all the problems are being fixed, and uh -huh. that's the theme song to that, which is kind of funny. Yeah. It also has one way or another. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way. It's a pretty boring soundtrack overall, yeah. and it, it reprises that theme song like once, and you're like, oh, it's that song again. They're like five times. Yeah, whatever. It uh, captures the same mood every time, which uh -huh. is pretty effective, but outside of that, it's kind of like a roll, roll my eyes, roll my toad down the road type soundtrack you know i think it should have all been missy elliott songs damn girl you know what i mean that would have been sick like if it had like a vibe to it doesn't even have to be missy yeah. elliott songs but say it was like i don't know missy elliott songs or something <laughs> then i feel like it would like have been a, like like a hard vibe like it doesn't have to be missy elliott but if it's all missy but elliott. if it was like all i don't know missy elliott yeah. then i feel like then it would be cool and accurate for the time because it was 2004 for sure not a great soundtrack to me but whatever <laughs> Sure, if they were a girl. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> what the hell? Sure, if they were a little girl in high school. What? <laughs> this is That's ridiculous. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd probably recommend it to someone. It's not like, it's probably like 13th on my list of movies between 2001 and 2006. <laughs> oh, okay. If someone was like, hey, what a weird I, list to make. If someone was like, oh, I'm really feeling like watching a movie between 2001 and 2006 tonight, what would you recommend? It would probably take me at least 13, maybe even 15, because you got The Sixth Sense, you got Gladiator. I mean, you got you got some heavy hitters kind of in that era. Uh huh. And then I would probably get to me and girls. I have like no no real qualms with it, but I'm not like excited to tell someone to watch it because usually when I tell someone to do something, I want them to come back and say thank you. That's I'm looking for that gratification. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah it's pretty low on my list, but I would. I, yeah, so, sure. Yeah, I'd say that if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. And if you haven't seen it in a while, I'd say just leave it alone. <laughs> Because, like, in your mind, I promise you, it's a little better than when you revisit it. Yeah. Like, this is the first one in this series that I knew I loved going into it and watched it and was like, oh, this has aged somewhat poorly. Yeah. Like, there's things I love about it, but I definitely, like, viewed it differently as an adult than I thought I would. I felt that way about Superbad. Yeah, I didn't feel that way about Superbad, really. There wasn't as many weak points in Superbad for me, and I feel like also the highs are higher. Like, they're, like the Bill Hader, Seth Rogen stuff in Superbad yeah. was, like, fantastic, whereas this had, like, some of that with Janice and Damien mm -hmm. and some of that with Tim Meadows and Tina Fey. But overall, I just think, like, I kind of noticed the flaws of this movie that I had previously either ignored or just fully not picked up on. Fair enough. He said it, not me. I think for me, it's just that Rachel McAdams, Amanda Seyfried, Tina Fey, Lizzie Kaplan, Tim Meadows, and Daniel Francese. Francese. Francese, however you say Damien's character's name. I feel like they just outshine the rest of the cast being like mostly the guy who plays Aaron Samuels and Lindsay Lohan. Mm -hmm. And also even like to an extent, Gretchen Wieners is yeah. just like all, that's like a shaky performance for me. I, I feel like they outshine that, and those feel like kind of like the crutches of the movie. For you sure. You know what I mean? And then the other thing is that there is a pretty heavy-handed dose of misogyny in this movie that I just like didn't fully wrap my head around. Or maybe it's just like culturally so much has changed that I view it differently. But I, I very much saw the themes and message of this movie differently when I came back to it. Which is kind of what this series is for, and I expected right. more of this to happen throughout watching these beloved movies of being like, well, it was great in 2006, but now not so much. Yeah. This has just a little bit of that. I still think it's a good movie, yeah. but I will say if you haven't seen it in a while and you feel like I'm being blasphemous right now, do rewatch it before you're like judging what I'm saying because mm -hmm. I thought of this as one of my favorite comedies ever yep. going into this, and I definitely... I still like it a lot. I just found some problems. You yeah. Know? Like, I knew, like, 20 minutes into Napoleon Dynamite. I was like, oh, my God, this movie's amazing. <laughs> like, yeah. It is a yeah. classic, yeah. and it's just, it's never going to lose it. Uh -huh. And I knew, like, 20 minutes into this, I was like, oh, shit. It's a little stuck in its time. Like, it doesn't have the timeless through line to it, I think, personally, that, you know, maybe some others we watch 
do. Yeah, I I will say just transparently, we when we were watching it together, about a half an hour in, Graydon turned to me and was like, "Is Lindsay Lohan good in this movie?" Yeah, and we like it was a question. It was not like, yeah. a, and I said I was like, I don't think so. Yeah, because during all of my research of it was everyone being like, holy shit, she came onto the scene. Like, this was yeah. Lindsay Lohan being like, bang, I am here. And like 30 minutes in, I was like, how did the people think that? Yeah, I, I think that she was pretty limited at the time. Yeah, and she has red hair. <laughs> I mean, she always had red. <laughs> I will say that's a huge plot hole, by the way. Her parents both have brown hair in this movie, and I'm like, how? Yeah, that's why yeah, they needed I mean, Brian Cranston in there. Does he have red hair? I don't think so. Yeah. But he's such a strong actor that it probably would have yeah, helped. I wouldn't even thought of it. I wouldn't <laughs> even thought about that. So for mine, I, I gave it three stars. And I said almost as good as I remember it. Kind of like one of those. Ooh. Yeah. Almost. Uh-huh. I also gave it three stars. And I said, we've come a long way. Go women. <laughs> cool. Cool. We have. Yeah. And it's yeah. great. We still have a long way to go. Totally. But I don't think we need to make a movie like from that perspective ever again. I think from the perspective of a woman? <laughs> well, <laughs> from a perspective of a redheaded woman. <laughs> no. I don't think like the clicky high school popular girl movie like this can really exist anymore because I think we kind of have progressed outside of some of the more classic misogynistic tropes or archetypes for young women. Yeah, let's do misogyny from the men's point of view. Yeah, okay, or at least that's, what more com- <laughs> that's what comedy is for. Yeah. Let's put out 50 of those a year. Yeah. And let's stop <laughs> making <laughs> movies about girls. <laughs> yes. My point will be that I do think if we're going to make another movie like Mean Girls, that it probably should not center a white girl who's from Africa and compares everything to jungle animals. That's a good point. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I still, I had a fun time watching it. Oh yeah. Although I found my problems with it. And uh, if you've seen this movie, let us know what you think about it in the comments. If you haven't seen this movie and you watched it because of this series, please let us know down in the comments what you thought about it. I'm yeah. curious. And also... Please join our Patreon. It's $5 a month, and we will tell you, if you are a Patreon member, one week ahead of time what movie we're watching for the series so you can watch it and then evaluate alongside us. Yes, and follow us both on Letterboxd to see what we watch outside of this series as well because, you know, we watch more than just old comedies. Yep, and I'm just getting my letterbox started. I only have a couple movies outside of How to Age on there, but I will be posting my reviews. And also, YouTube members get that heads up as well. If you're a member on our main channel, Hive Mind, for $5 a month, we post the movies on there a week ahead of time as well. So, thank you for watching How Did It Age. On Wednesdays, we wear pink, dog. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in the next one. This has been Hive Mind Unlimited. Sorry, Lindsay Lohan. Sorry, Tina Fey. I'm going to adjust once so that I can stop. I know. I know. I have this problem the whole time? No, not the whole time. That's why I'm doing it now. Okay. Okay. I know I like to adjust the mic, but it just doesn't, for some reason, mine, it it has a trouble staying up. And that happens as you get older. So (laughs) you have have that to look forward to. Yeah, I can't wait to be 30 like you, man. You set a good example for the rest of us. Thanks, man. Kronk's got eight years to get ready for this. Kronk's only 12? Yeah. The limit does not exist.